Shalom dear friend, this is wonderful to be with you again. My name is Natalie Blackham and today again we have um, Karen Pryor, which is wonderful. We are going to dig in the Hebrew language because you know how it's a treasure and we find principle of life, isn't it? In it. We have done already some uh, program with Karen and uh, she's an educator with the Hebrew language. She make Aliyah, which means that she came back She's a Jewish lady and she came back to live in Israel, which is her beloved nation. And uh, we're going to speak with you. We know how important is the Hebrew and sometimes um, we can't always find things or we need to find some teachers. So now you have a good teacher from Israel. Karen, thank you again for coming today and start with the treasure that you have and what you want to share with us today. Well, there's so much, but in our program last time, we were talking about the new Hebrew year, which is 5,777 years from Adam. And uh, we realized when you added the numbers, mm -hmm. 5777, seven, seven, what total do you get? 26. Oh yes, 26. Yeah, yeah. yeah. three mm -hmm. sevens or mm -hmm. 21 plus mm -hmm. five, 26. Mm -hmm. Now, we also spoke about how in Hebrew, each letter has a value. So because Aleph is the first letter, it's one. Bet is the second letter, it's two. So each letter has a numerical mm -hmm. value. And that's how if you add them up, you get 26. And our friends, you know, are starting to learn that because we ah. do segment now for every program, so we are through the letters. Mm. And so it's just to build up, you know, the bricks to know more about the Hebrew language. Yes. So the 26 is the same value as Yud the name Vav of God, mm. the name of God, Yud, He, Vav, He. Yud is 10, He is 5, Vav is 6, He is 5. Mm. So you add those up, you get 26. Now. I felt that was important because it's almost as if this year just has, we can see what's happening in the world around us. It's a very significant year. Huge changes are happening everywhere. There's trouble bursting out everywhere. And it's almost as if God wants to put his name on this year in a very special way. This is amazing that you say that because I received a letter yesterday of, of a dear friend and she said, you know, Natalie, I can feel that God, and she hasn't been yet in Israel. I'm praying that she will come sometime. She said, I can feel that God is so close and the Temple, the temple Mount is so important. Mm. And she, she's a prayer lady, okay? She doesn't know a lot, mm. but like God is showing her things. So when I received the letter yesterday, is exactly, and I have to tell her about the year because yes. I didn't share that to her yes. yet. I feel it's really significant and even the fact it's 5,777 and you have all the sevens and seven is a very important number in the Bible as you know. Completion. It's completion mm -hmm. and so something is as if something's coming to an end and then there's going to be this new beginning. And also seven, when it's in the Bible, it's always connected with, often connected with time. Mm -hmm. You have the seven days of the week, six days with Shabbat. Mm -hmm. You have the seven years, the Shemitah. Mm -hmm. And it's always the connected, jubilee, the Jubilee seven, after seven, seven times seven, mm -hmm. you, then you get the Jubilee. So it's um, always connected with holiness, something set apart unto God. Mm -hmm. So in a way, this mm -hmm. year is mm -hmm. three times seven is, is set apart unto God. And we have to look for his will. We have to look for what he's trying to say to us. And this ties in with what I'd like to do today. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Mm -hmm. I found, mm -hmm. discovered that in the Hebrew Bible, the name of God that we're talking about, the yud He vav He, the Tetragrammaton, it's mentioned 1,820 times. 1,820. So if you add 1,820, you get? 1,820, 11. 11. Mm -hmm. So that's two ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be talking, if we can get time, about the Shema. And we know the name of God. It says Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, one. But now, funny that with his name, there are two ones. But I thought, well, that makes sense because to have a real one, 
You need yeah. two because yeah. it's all yeah. to do with relationship. It's all to do with our relationship with him, our relationships with one another. And so those two, funny, it's sort of... Like love. We looked at lo love last time, I yes. think, and it was 13. Yes, 13. And again, to, to be two, 26 is the name of God, and you need to be two to show love. So it's yes. uh, all, all together. <laughs> it, it's, it's all connected, and, and Echad is also 13. And that's what we said. We said to get the 26, you need the full name of God. You need Echad and love, mm -hmm. and that makes one. Yeah, so it's all there. Yeah, and um, now what I'd like to look at though, oh, but before, uh, you know, the verse Zechariah 14, mm -hmm. chapter 14, verse 9. Now, read the whole chapter of Zechariah. It's all about the end times, it's all about the light, you know, in that day. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, in that day, the Yom Hahu, when. Hashem, Yudhevav He, shall be king over all the earth. He shall be one and his name one. one. So there you have the two ones even in that verse. But um, looking at the year 5777, mm -hmm. on thought, the Jewish year, the, the Hebrew calendar, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which Hebrew. is, I mean, and God goes according to his mm -hmm. biblical Hebrew calendar. I so it's time we get into sync with that <laughs> very much. But the 70 is the letter Ein. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just hold up the Ein, um, which you can see the shape of it. Mm -hmm. That's the letter Ein. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly enough, what does Ein mean in Hebrew? Every letter has a name and it has a meaning. Mm -hmm. Ein is your I. And the, the cursive actually looks like an eye. You know, it also looks like a little fish, which I like, yeah. but it also looks like an eye. But um, in Aramaic, mm -hmm. ein means sheep. Mm, and you'll see in this picture, there's a picture of a little goat, actually, mm -hmm. because goat in Hebrew is is, beginning with okay. ein. Ein, and it's funny, it's ein sein, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we'll be looking at 70 and 7. Mm -hmm. So there you see the little goat. Um, but I was thinking that's very a, a good thought, actually, because if you're thinking of eyes, the mm -hmm. eyes are so important because we see with our eyes. We look. Um, and, and you see the, uh, the soul of the person through the eyes. Through eye. the eyes, mm -hmm. right. And if you think of the Aramaic meaning sheep or even goats, mm -hmm. uh, the eyes of the sheep always looking to the shepherd who's leading them. Mm -hmm. And the shepherd's eye is always on his sheep. Mm -hmm. So even as we look to God. And funnily enough, the, the, the shape of the eye. And when you say that, because yeah. we look at him, we, we feel at peace. Ah, but yes. when we forget, when we look somewhere else, suddenly, you know, we are afraid. And all and he's like, he said, come back and look at me and go, you know, keep in contact with me. So yes. you will be in shalom, you yes. will have peace. And if you're not keeping an eye on the shepherd, you can take the wrong path and get lost. And maybe applying that to this year, I think we have to make sure our focus is mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. God, on his word, on the shepherd, that we are following very closely mm -hmm. to him. Um, now, interestingly, the ein, if you look at the shape of the letter, mm -hmm. it's made up of two letters. Mm -hmm. The one is the noon. But mm -hmm. notice the noon isn't up like it usually is. Mm -hmm. It's bent. Mm -hmm. And it's as if it's looking upwards. You know, it's, it's uh, looking up. Mm -hmm. And the, this is a vav. Now, the vav is always a little yud coming down. And yud mm -hmm. is the first letter of the name of God. So they see a vav as God coming down. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you humble yourself and you, you're looking up to him mm -hmm. for everything, then he will come down and be the shepherd who provides all that you need. Which is totally, again, the verse was saying you seek after him and he will show you the ways. Yes, again, so it's, it's seen, um, actually, the, the, the sages of Israel and in Jewish literature, mm -hmm. the, the, the name for a poor man, mm -hmm. the word for a poor man mm -hmm. is Ani. It's the same letters with Ein, Nun, Yud. Mm -hmm. just the like I am poor. I am poor. Mm -hmm. I, I need you. It's, it's saying... I am needy. 
Yes, I'm needing, I'm and, and we all, no matter how strong and whatever wealthy we are, <laughs> you know, um, in worldly terms, we all need God. This relationship with Him. This yeah. relationship yeah. with Him, and He mm -hmm. will provide all our needs mm -hmm. according to His riches and glory. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, so, uh, really, because how we see, Natalie, it, 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 it really affects our perspective on life. Yeah. It affects our discernment of things. Our way of thinking. Yes. Yes. All that. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in, um, he, in also uh, Jewish literature, mm -hmm. uh, the sages talk about you can have a good eye, mm -hmm. ein hatov, mm -hmm. or ein hara, mm -hmm. a bad eye. Now, what does that mean? It means a good eye is one that sees um, the good in others. Things. It's yeah. looking to God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it brings love, blessing. You're looking at things like with a good lens mm -hmm. and uh, seeing life, seeing the beauty and the goodness that there is in life because mm -hmm. life is a gift. And this is what Jesus was saying. Yes. Uh, now, is in Matthew. Can you read it from yeah, the book sure. in Matthew? In Matthew 6, 22, it's written, the eye is the lamp of the body. Mm -hmm. And if your eyes are good, your whole body is full of light, mm -hmm. which is exactly what we're saying. If you see life in a good way, it's like everything, you know, it's like the perspective is, is uh, you, you can see the good things. And Matthew 6, 23, but if your eye are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how much is that darkness? Mm. So, and a bad eye, ein hara, mm -hmm. um, it, it's seen, I mean, the basis of it is envy or jealousy, if you're looking mm -hmm. with that sort of so envy. Ein ra. Ein ra. Ra That's is it. bad, ein tov is good. We are so trying to teach people how to say yes. things. So <laughs> ein ra means a bad eye. Ein ra. And ein tov is a good eye, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we That's want. <laughs> because the tov. bad eye brings um, with it, mm -hmm. if it's stemming from pride and envy and jealousy, and it, yeah. it, it's bringing hatred, curses, death. You know, like it says, your body will be full of and darkness. Separation. And separation. That is a key one I wanted to mention because with a good eye, I'm sure you all know Psalm 133. Mm -hmm. So it says, behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren will sit together in unity. So that is the end result of the good eye. It's bringing people together. It's bringing unity, oneness. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting again because here, echad is translated unity. Yeah. When when we say the Shema is say one, mm -hmm. but it's the same concept, same concept that is unity, that God is, is a unit. And I think we're speaking, I want to pick it up because I was speaking also with a friend yesterday and she's from a Catholic background. She came in Israel, discovered Israel, discovered the Jewish people, discovered her root of her religion, I would say, and suddenly put all the things back in perspective. And so she said, well, where, you know, where am I? And I said, but you are who you are. And God doesn't want all the people to be the same, but like in unity, he wants us to know and to be, uh, attached to Israel yes. and this is like in diversity we can be one and she was saying to me oh it's so important and I say yes I know and we need to know because so often as religion even the world system sometimes say you need to be all like that tak, 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 tak. but no, mm. God never never which is never. like communism where yeah. everybody had to yeah. look the same be the same do the same it's not the and way of it's God. Not exactly. No. We are all unique, and God yes. loves that. Mm. So it's, it's very important. But I think it's to be one in Him. It's that, that's that's the, the, the basis. I mean, there has to be a basis for unity. Um, and if we believe He is the one, mm -hmm. His, you know, and um, that, and, and I think what did uh, Yeshua uh, Jesus, what did he say? He said he prayed. That was mm -hmm. his prayer that we would all be one, mm -hmm. just 
in him, as he is one with the Father. So there is a sort of common ground that you need for unity. And if it's his word, and if it's his That's truth, and if it's his love, that will bring the unity in diversity. Mm -hmm. But yeah. again, this is what, what, what yeah. when we look at so the, the Hebrew thing, is like truth has different facets. Uh, you were speaking about, yes, maybe you want to yes. speak a bit we'll, about Okay, we'll, we'll get to that. But let me just, I have to just um, keep this on the fact that of, I want to, don't want us to move away from this idea of seeing because that is what the eye mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And we, so we, that, but that will come in in a minute mm -hmm. about the 70 sure. facets, yeah. right? And it, we were talking about verses that we love in this, you know, in the Bible, and there's so many, but one of my favorites is Psalm 27, mm -hmm. verse 4, mm -hmm. which it says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, mm -hmm. and that will I seek after. What does David say? He says, to dwell in the house of the Lord and to gaze on the beauty of the Lord forever. I mean, that's just to be in that place. <laughs> and that's that gazing and looking. Now, that made me think of, okay, that means how do we behold the beauty of God? How do we see God, actually? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? We're talking about seeing and we're looking to God all the time. But, I mean, we remember when Abraham saw it says he lifted up his eyes. It had to be an intentional looking. And he saw the three strangers coming past, but they were actually angels. Mm -hmm. But then the two angels left after the meal to go to warn Lot mm -hmm. in Sodom. Mm -hmm. But the one stayed with him and he realized he was speaking with the Lord. I mean, it says he was, you know, um, so that was one occasion. But the other verse that just puzzles me so much all the time, <laughs> you might be able to throw some light on it, but is Exodus 24 verses 9 to 11. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole story. We know Moses also was face to face with God mm -hmm. somehow that, and talk about the light when after seeing God, mm -hmm. he was shining with that light that he had to veil his mm -hmm. face. But um, then in Exodus 24, it talks about Moses Aaron and his sons, mm -hmm. and 70 elders. That's mm -hmm. what caught my eye, the 70 mm -hmm. again. So you in your book, you have a, a section called the Amazing 70, and I think this will bring in what you just said. Mm. So this is a book, if you want to find it, it's the beauty of the Hebrew language, and we are selling it on our website. And it's just the introduction, isn't it, of, of the Hebrew language, but it's... it's like a taste of it. Yeah, which is and you wonderful. know, I'm still learning Hebrew, but I really use to remember certain name, how to write it when you have the Ale for the Ain. Ain. Oh, and it really me helps too. me. <laughs> it really helps me to know, okay, that when you have the notion of God, Elohim is the Aleph, yes. and Ain is the Fran, and it's more the I. And it, yeah. anyway, it helps. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> it helps, I tell you. So the amazing 70. The Lord, who has 70 names, okay, gave the Torah, the scriptures, who have 70 names too, to Israel, which also has 70 names, and which originated for 70 people who went down to Egypt. Yeah, Jacob's family was 70 when that's they went down it, to Egypt. That's yeah. it, with Jacob, and was chosen from among 70 nations to celebrate 70 holy days <laughs> in the year, which is 52 Shabbats and 18 festivals. Because Shabbat is really a holy day, of which course. is wonderful to know. It's Once a week, day. we have a holiday. <laughs> the Torah was transmitted to 70 elders, yes. so is what you are saying. And there are 70 facets of the Torah, of the scripture, or, and, yeah, and, and of truth. Because yes, Torah is truth, truth, right? Which was translated into seventy language that make it understandable to the seventy yes. nations <laughs> in the holy city of Jerusalem, which had seventy names. They built the temple, who has seventy pillars. Whoa. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> so you see this number seventy of this year, five thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven. It, it's um, all the I, way through scripture. Yeah. It's amazing. And then with the seven and the ayin, the yeah, 70 ayin. being ayin, the seeing. Mm -hmm. So let's look at a couple of meanings yeah. of the seeing because um, 
What was interesting in the, the, those verses, mm -hmm. you will see two words, English words for seeing. Mm -hmm. And it says, verse 9, it says, they saw God. And that mm -hmm. word in Hebrew is ra'ah, mm -hmm. li'ot, that means to see. So, um, and then in verse 11, it says, they beheld God. Mm -hmm. And that word in Hebrew is chaza. So it's two separate Hebrew words, mm -hmm. but which essentially mean the same. But now, so I looked up a, a couple of, of scriptures with ra'ah, to see, is in Jeremiah 5, verse 12. Mm -hmm. It says, um, the meaning is to look at, to perceive something, to even experience it while you're looking at it. In Isaiah 52, 15, it says the meaning to gain understanding of. And in Judges 7, 17, it says to observe and even to observe to imitate. So you're mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. while you're looking mm -hmm. and to so discover true. something. Now, all those meanings for see had um, um, like a, a conscious looking. Mm -hmm. You know, when Abraham looked up, he, he was consciously looking for people who were going past who he could help in the desert. Mm -hmm. um, and it, but it's all it might involves, like you mentioned, your thinking. It's an intellectual exercise, mm -hmm. if you will. You're mm -hmm. looking to learn something. You're looking to perceive, to observe. But the second word in verse 11, chaza, it's like a poetic form of seeing. Mm -hmm. it, it's not, it's something that sometimes can catch you even by surprise, where mm -hmm. you suddenly see a vision of something or, uh, and, and, and it means that the, what that's what David said when he wanted to be in the house of the Lord forever and to gaze upon the beauty. Mm -hmm. It's to, to, to just be in awe of something. So use that to name? look in beauty. Has has mm. Yeah. So is it more like almost, is it like a vision? Or do you understand? It's used, for, it's used particularly for, for in seeing God, where, where it's like it goes beyond your natural reason. Okay. It, okay. It's something that blows your mind, in yeah. other words, almost. It's almost it's, like it's, it's not just your intellect. It's not your intellect. It's so like your an whole, experience. and it involves mm. your emotion. It, it, it does something with your emotion mm. that you just feel this awe and amazement. And, you know, um, there's even a dimension of delight and ecstasy in it, you know. It's sometimes in worship. Exactly. You can feel that. It's just yeah. you feel like a And the a thing delight. is, when it's like that, it's like you will remember it forever. Oh. It's like an experience that you are having. Do you understand? I think because it goes beyond your mind yeah. to your spirit. Mm -hmm. I think that's when it's almost like with your whole spirit, you sing something mm -hmm. and you, you know. That's it. That's yeah. we experience God. We don't just, it's not just an intellectual exercise. Now, I want to speak to you because the time is, is running. This is also a book, if you want, that um, Karen wrote and is a test of the Torah. And it's really devotional. It's all about the scriptures and, uh, and it's beautiful. And it's been and some Hebrew mentions in it as that's well. That's it, yeah, no, to chew and Hebrew. to delight in, in the scriptures. And so it goes it. through each uh, weekly portion, each portion of the week. You know, you have a Torah portion that is read. And so it takes you through the whole year of, of Torah portions, but with a special focus on the kind of things that we're talking about. And, and to do that is like, because it's the Jewish people are reading the scriptures in that way, when we do it with them again, we're like, it's more in unity. Yes. So Echad is very important echad again. Echad is very go. important. Yes. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about the good eye and the bad eye, and the bad eye brings separation. I made a little, um, acronym for, you know, we talk about the foe, the enemy coming mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. us all the time. And foe is F-O-E. Mm -hmm. And I thought that could stand for the force of estrangement. It's mm -hmm. at work all the time trying to estrange people, drive them apart, you know, mm -hmm. a, when God wants unity. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Here we go again. <laughs> it's, time is just flying. Friends, I hope that you really enjoyed this, uh, this digging in the scriptures. And uh, from uh, Karen and from me, we say bye and see you next week. So today we are looking at Lamed, which is the 12th letter of the Aleph Bet. 
which is very interesting. The letter Lamed is majestic, towering in among all the other letters. And if you remember, we say that every letter is very important and in a very special position. So Lamed is a wonder of the wonders. On one side, you have Kaf that we looked at. Uh, we looked at it last week. And Kaf represents Kise Akavod, the throne of God. So Kise Akavod is the throne of God. So it's on one side of Lamed. And on the other side, we have the other letter Mem, which represents uh, Malchut, which is God's kingdom. So when you put the three letters together, and with the Lamed in the middle, you have Meler, and Meler is the king. So you see the king is enthroned in the middle of the Aleph Bet. Very, very important. Now something also which is beautiful is Lamed comes from the verb Lil Mod. And Lil Mod means teaching, and it means also learning. So again, you see, it's the tallest letter which means that learning and teaching is something very important because we can always acquire more wisdom. Okay, so this week we look at the letter Lamed, which is a beautiful letter, the tallest, because learning and teaching is so important. And this is wonderful to be able to learn with you. And don't forget to see us next week. Bye. Thank you, Karen, again for coming and to give us some treasure from the scriptures. And friends, you can find us on www.israelfirst.org. And it's always a pleasure to connect with you. Write us email, tell us what you think about uh, the, the program. And maybe you have some subjects and topics that you would like to speak about when we have questions. Well, we'll be delighted to answer them. And uh, we love to speak about Israel, and the people and the language of Israel. And from me and from Karen, bye from now.